Alright, Saturday morning, I was going to do something uh, kind of uh, more direct, but today I decided I'm going to do something pretty intense because that's where my head is. So we're going to talk about trauma. We're going to talk about trauma. Um, trauma could be a lot of things. Trauma could be... Growing up in a rough environment, growing up in a dangerous neighborhood, it could be growing up with abusive parents. It could be growing up, it could be growing up in church. It could be, it could be the, your relationship with your sister or brother. It could be the relationship your parents have with one of your siblings. Trauma could be a lot of things. Trauma could be a relationship. Trauma could be a car accident, or. Um, or drowning, or, or something that just happened to you as a kid that everybody says you should just get over. You know, we all got those things. But, um, uh, so I'm sitting here, but, uh, I'm gonna be open and I'm gonna let out my trauma. So, most people know I am. I am a very talented flirt. I am uh, very outgoing and, mm, I guess, gregarious. Uh, I'm very, look at that. I'm very much me. I'm always pushing the limits to everything that I do. And then like, for a lot of times, because of everything that I've been through, it's pretty easy for me to just look at something and say, Okay, this happened, let's go. Uh, and I, my traumas are very from, you know, violence to uh, emotional abuse and mental abuse and different things like that. But the most important part about that is that when you're really looking at it, is coming to understand where you stand in response and in responsibility to your actions and your responses to whatever happens to you. And this is important because what I'm about to share and what I'm about to talk about, we go into a phase where, well, honestly, not even a phase. There's like a, a heartbeat, a moment. There's a moment in between what happened and how you respond. The little moment in there between is where you decide what you're going to do. It's none of that, oh, I blacked out and I just got upset. No, fuck that. You're full of shit. You decided what you're going to do because you felt a certain way. It's called ownership and owning what you do and owning your actions, claiming it. For me, I have so the, the other thing we're going to do was uh, we're going to do the discussion of fuck boys. Um, but I'm going to save that one maybe for tomorrow or Monday. But what we're going to talk about right now is kind of interrelated, especially when it's related to me. I live by a set of very rigid principles. It could be it's overbearing. It's led to like a lot of friction between me and other people, led to fights, led to my sister not talking to me, led to, it led to different things. Shoot, it drives my mom nuts. My dad can't stand it sometimes, but he'll talk to me. And he'll even, you know, try to help me and me being me, I'm, <clears throat> no. But that to me, you know, that to me and my reaction to my trauma and how I, I develop my personality. Oftentimes, though, what I also find is like, for me, trauma makes it very hard to relate to people. Which is funny because in coaching, I've learned and I've done a lot of extensive education on communication and talking to people and understanding and interrelating with people. And in my realm, I am really talented. I'm comfortable saying that. I I know it. That's what I'm good at. That's why people come back to me. 
That's why I've had certain clients for almost 10 years. Now, the other side of that, though, it also means that oftentimes I'm not going to be very open or very um, eager to allow people in. It's also even why, they, like, even my my promoting of coaching and my coaching is very mute. I do it haphazardly. And it's something that I'm working towards because like I really, I just prefer, I prefer to get to know people. I prefer to know who I'm coaching. I prefer to know you because for me, that's a, it's a very, it's a very intimate thing. It's a, it's a very big, a big degree of trust. It's a very, it's something that I have to be comfortable with you in order for you to truly understand that I am here to make sure that you can be the best you you could possibly be. And I'm going to do everything to make that possible. Trauma. Now, I'm talking about all these things and how they relate to me. But now, the better question is, how do they relate to you? When you're sitting there and you're looking at your 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 interactions, your interactions with people, that whole we're gonna go back to that what I talked about the other day, where people say it doesn't matter how people respond to you, and then even like in a lot of the 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 memes and the popular things that they say right now about isolating yourself, there is isolating yourself to understand you. To do the work, do the work with yourself. Actively. Understand that. Actively. It's not just going to hide and watch TikTok videos. It's not just going to going and sitting and, and, and then disassociate and watching television and watching movies all day. Or even like running off to like go run. You know, go to the gym. Go do whatever it is. That's not actively doing the work. Doing the work is reflecting on who you are and how you are defined. Because at the end of the day, and it was, it's, it's kind of funny. I'm just looking at this thing about Margaret Mead. Margaret Mead was an anthropologist and her student asked her, what do you think was the most significant thing which defined civilization? And Margaret Mead had said it was a broken femur bone. And the students were all flabbergasted as to why. And she says, well, if you break your femur out in the wild at some point back in ancient civilization, you were food. You were meat for predators. You were prey. You cannot survive. You cannot go hunt. You cannot go eat. You cannot go. And that's important because that meant somebody had to stay, help you, take care of you, keep you safe, help you heal, help you recover. Hey, Randy. Good to see you. The mother of twins. And so, like, if that person is sitting up there helping you recover, grow, heal, come back, that's a sign of civilization. Again, why am I talking about that in relate to Trump? Because... When we go through whatever the trauma is that we're going through, after we do the work on ourselves, we understand who we are. When we come back to civilization, the most civilized thing we can do is help someone else. If your trauma is so severe that you cannot go out and help someone else, you need to sit there and focus on actively doing the work into understanding who you are and understanding that in your healing, in your process of recovery, your actual healing process is the ability to provide impact, to provide sustenance, to, to, to provide life, energy, and flow to someone else, to go beyond yourself, to understand that your healing is not just about you.
and then that goes when you truly look at it that goes to everything else that you do whether that's recovering from an auto accident like me that's recovering from an illness that's what coming recovering from or um, other good examples of this is that's recovering from from a loss of a job or a lot like worse for some of those um, mothers out there who lost children um, or, or, or miscarried children it's a very the moment you start healing when you heal you also have to understand that healing also affects everyone around you because that wound that you are holding, that you are seeping, that's slowly leaking away from you is going on to everyone around you. Trauma. Your trauma transcends you. So in your healing process, Make sure that all the good things that you come up with, all the good things that you develop within yourself, all the things that you find within you, the beautiful things you find within you, make sure that they transcend you and help those around you. Trauma. Don't let your trauma cause you to hide. Don't let it make you, force you to withdraw and take away because your shine matters to everyone. You matter. All right, that's all I got today on this, but it was something that was uh, eating at me since like five this morning, something that I thought about all day. So I thought about I'd share it with you guys, and um, I hope y'all have a great Saturday or Sunday, whichever day you are, whatever side of the world you want. Really appreciate you. Y'all take care. What's up, Dre? Dude.